Hey everybody, what is up? Welcome to the second episode of how to improve your gameplay in first-person shooters. The previous episode we went about the very basics, how to set up your keyboard, your mouse, how to set up your card holder, etc. Today we're gonna go um, over a bit more specific stuff, but um, let me start off by saying that I like to explain why you should make these changes. So I'm gonna explain you the stuff um, that you need in order for you to be, um, you know, autonomous in regards to making your own decisions, what you should disable, what you should lower, etc, etc. So let's start off by just distinguish the two different types of mice there are in the market. You have optical and you have laser. Optical uses like an LED that scans the surface, but it's limited to opaque surfaces. Shiny ones are a huge pain in the ass. Usually the DPI is, re is lower than the laser ones, even though some optical mice can now support like up to 4000 DPI, Usually they are around 400 to 800, some a bit higher. But laser mice is much more accurate, works on every surface, and it's capable of much higher DPI. Um, now, speaking of DPI, mouse work with two different things, guys. Mice work with DPI and polling rate. The first thing, DPI, stands for dots per inch. It's like a mouse's DPI rating is the number of data recorded by the sensor over one inch of physical movement of the mouse. Usually, um, high DPI means that more movement data is generated by the sensor and the on-screen cursor will move greater distances without requiring you to move the mouse further away. So let's say this one is set up to have 500 DPI and I want to do a 180 degree turn in-game. I have to do this from one way to the other, from one side to the other. But if my mouse has 1000 DPI, the double, and I want to do a 180 degree turn in game, I just have to do this. So the mouse travels has to travel a shorter distance, but in game it will um, be the equivalent of a 180 degree, for example. Um, and then you have the polling rate. This is really important. Like um, while tracking, a typical mouse will send the X and Y coordinates or movement calculations, as well as the information of which buttons you're pressing to the computer. And it usually, it usually does that 125 times per second, which means an average of like once every 8 milliseconds. Um, usually mice have like 125 Hz, and the higher, the faster the mouse updates, therefore the more responsive it will feel. You can look at this um, chart right here, it says like the higher the Hz, the more responsive it is, and that's all you want when you're gaming. But before we go into any specifics of how it affects you in-game, uh, let's just take care of something that is fucking annoying and a lot of players don't even know that, which is the mouse acceleration. Um, acceleration is something that a lot of gamers aren't even aware of and they need to be because it's, it can result in inconsistent behavior with the mouse. But simply like acceleration increases the speed of your mouse cursor based on the speed you move your mouse. This might sound like a good idea, but it causes problems. If you move the mouse from point A to point B, then you expect your cursor to do the same time, the same thing each time you move the mouse between those two points. But with, that, with acceleration enabled, it won't because you'll vary the speed that you move the mouse between those two points and end up with inconsistent aiming. So the thing you should do is go to your Windows mouse options, just go to your start menu and type mouse, for example, and go to your pointer precisions, and you should have this default, which is in the middle. But make sure that you have the enhanced pointer precision unthicked, empty, all right? This needs to be like you see in the picture, in the image. Then hit apply, hit OK. Then you're almost done. There's one thing that you should do because acceleration doesn't go off that easily. You should check the link in the description, download the um, registry files, select your Windows ones because I'm using Windows 8.1. So you come here, you select Windows 0.1 and then you have the different files for different text, text sizes. For you to understand which one you're using, go to control panel, um, personalization and go to display. And you should see something uh, in the smaller 100% uh, default. You probably have this one. I have the medium at 125 because that way thick stuff is bigger and I don't have to stress my eyesight that much. So because I use 125%, 
when you're using these registry files make sure you go for the uh, for the one that corresponds to your windows in my case i should go for this one 125 percent after you install this run this as administrator or no no just open it yeah yeah just open it um, then you need to reboot your computer after you reboot your computer check something out um, unzip the mouse movement recorder and execute it you will see the the recordings of that your mouse is doing in real time red stuff means that something is bad usually black or green it's all good but red it means bad i have a lot of red stuff because the death other edition sucks from razor it has really uh, a lot of glitches that make it really inconsistent even the polling rate as you can see in the screen um, is completely different it should be stable around 1000 but it's not you see like um, 800 here, 300, 100, it's bad. It's a problem with the sensor, um, with the laser of this mouse. It not only skips frames when you're moving it, um, but the high DPI also gives it negative acceleration, which is really bad. Negative acceleration is you move the mouse from point A to point B, and if you move it really fast, you will have a deceleration in game so the crosshair will move really slowly and that will get you killed really often i really need to change the mouse but that's just a curiosity i just wanted to give you the heads up if you're considering in buying one mouse don't get the death other if you already have this one i know the feeling bro you just have to deal with it or get a new one i'm sorry there's nothing you can really do it's hardware related not driver um anyway let's move on then there's um, now how does the DPI affect your in-game sensitivity? The important thing is to use the full capability of the mouse when you're playing first-person shooter games. No matter what sensitivity you play the game at, you should really use the mouse on its highest DPI setting while in-game. Sorry, um, this gives you the finest precision. Like it makes the movement feel a lot smoother, guys. A lot smoother. The only exception to this rule is players using very low sensitivity such as myself but i'm a really weird case because i'm a wrist player that plays with low sensitivity with really low dpi it's stupid i know but eh, never mind forget about me <laughs> um now another thing is you're probably wondering well if i set the, the dpi to the maximum my in-game sensitivity is going to be all messed up well trust me there's a formula that you can use to, um, to help you increase that, uh, to help you with that problem. Let's go to the calculator here. And I'm not joking, there's a formula to actually calculate that stuff. Not even kidding, yes, I'm that much of a nerd. Um, so you basically have your current DPI, mine is 1,200. One you multiply it by your in-game sensitivity. Now, how can you change your in-game sensitivity? Well, it's quite easy. You go to documents, Battle for 4, settings, prof safe profile, edit it with notepad, and there you go. GTS input mouse sensitivity, 0 0.015. Alright, so, I'm gonna have my current DPI, multiply it by 0 0.015, and then divide it by the maximum DPI the mouse is capable of, capable of which is um, 3,500. 3,500. There you go. So my in-game sensitivity uh, for me to take the most out of my DPI without affecting my in-game sensitivity. This, If you do this, this will be the equivalent of what you have now. But it will feel smoother because you're, you're using it in, with the highest uh, DPI settings. So uh, right now, for example, if I wanted to use the highest DPI settings, I would set my in-game sensitivity to 0.005. Now let's move to the other really important thing, guys, which is your, your monitor, really. Maximize your monitor refresh rate, guys. It's really, really, really important. I cannot stress this enough. That's it, guys. This is a really good uh, trick for you to take the most out of your mouse. Okay, guys, regarding the DPI, one final tip here. Remember, this is just like a general guideline. It, it's not necessarily 100% like this, but it should give you a, a head start so that you can um, realize which is best for you or which type of gamer you are. Usually low sensitivity players, let's say players that take like 20 centimeters to the way 100 degree turn, like from if you're in game and you have to do to move your mouse 
all this to make a 120 degrees, uh, 180 degrees turn, then you have low, you are a low sensitivity player. You can easily get away with like 200, 300 DPI, uh, but you want those Earths as fast as possible, all right? So the DPI here is not, high DPI is not really important. Um, if you have, if you take, if you do a 120 degree turn with less than 20 centimeters, you want to go, probably you can go along with 800 DPI, 900, depending on the resolution you're playing. If you're playing on a high resolution, 800, 900, 1000 is okay for you. Um, if you if you are a high sensitivity player, like if you if you can do a 180 degree turn in less than 10 centimeters, then beyond 1200 uh, or 1500 DPI, um, you're fine with it, you know, it, it, it really, it's okay. So again, this is just a general guideline, all right, guys, really important. Now, one last thing, guys, maximize your monitor refresh rate. This section doesn't seem to have anything to do with mice, but it does. No matter what resolution you use, you want your monitor to refresh at its fastest speed. There is a big advantage on using 100, uh, 100 hertz or greater in your monitor. The gameplay is uh, more fluid, isn't as choppy, it's much smoother. And when you're getting high frame rates along with those 100 hertz, your monitor uh, refreshes faster each second and the mouse in the game will feel a lot smoother. So this is the perfect formula for you would be to have like 120 hertz monitor, 120 frames per second in game, a monitor that um, has a response time of one millisecond and have a mouse capable of uh, having also one second response time um, with the polling rate. So if you have um, all those things at the same level, you are taking the most out of your hardware. And that's what it's all about, guys. Taking the most out of your peripherals to make it as smooth as possible. Now the final, the, T, uh, the too long didn't read part. Oh my god, Raider, this is so complicated. I don't even know what to do. Well, here's the, 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 the 10 steps of this video. Buy a laser mouse. Do not, first, buy a laser mouse. Second, do not buy a razor that other. Third, use Windows default sensitivity but disable the pointer precision. Fourth, install the registry files to be 100% sure that you get rid of mouse acceleration. Fifth, the higher the DPI, the better, unless you have a really low sensitivity. Sixth, set the polling rate to the maximum. The more it updates information to your computer, the smoother it will be, the more responsive it will feel. Seventh, practice and keep changing your in-game sensitivity until you can do accurate uh, target switching and accurate, re and accurate reflex shots. Ninth, set your screen refresh rate to the maximum. And finally, tenth, like, favorite, share, and give me all your money. <laughs> Thanks a lot for watching, guys. The next episode, we'll have in-game footage and how you can uh, improve your in-game skills, all right? Thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful guys, I love you long time, see ya!